Track stacks, VCAs, groups, they're all just words until you know exactly what they do and how each one is a little bit different. They all share common traits, but they all have a role to play, particularly when you're mixing and organizing your session in Logic Pro. Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer, and welcome back to the channel. When it comes time to organizing and mixing your track, knowing the difference between track stacks, groups, VCAs is gonna be very beneficial. They do all have similar functions. They do group things together, but that's pretty much where the similarity ends. There's a lot to cover in this one, so let's not dawdle, let's just dive straight into it. So first cab off the rank, track stacks, what are they? In many ways, track stacks are actually what a lot of people think of as groups when they start thinking about grouping tracks together. I'll show you what I mean. So when you come into your session, you might be looking at trying to group some of these tracks together. Maybe they have a similar function like all of these lead tracks. Maybe they're all pads or chords or something like that. Whatever it might be, if you're looking at grouping tracks together so that you can close and open that group, so that you can move that whole group as one, so that you can maybe turn the volume up and down on that group, track stacks are probably gonna be your best bet. It's quite simple to do a track stack, but there are actually two types. There's a folder and a summing. And let me show you why. So if I have this top track here selected and we move down and look at the inspector, you can see in the inspector that you've got the fader, you've got the pan knob, and you've also got things like audio effects, sends, these are options to add plugins and to send part of the signal out to an auxiliary track. When you're dealing with track stacks, the difference between folder and summing really comes down to this. Do you want your stack, your group, to have plugins being processed on it? If you do, you want summing. If you just want a volume control and to group them up so that you can kind of move them all at once or collapse them down, then folder is more of an organizational track stack that might be right for you. Let's take a look at both. Okay, so I'm just gonna highlight this group here. Let's say I wanna group these together into a track stack. I can do it two ways. I can either right click here and go create track stack, or you can also find it under track and create track stack, which is also command shift D. This is where you get the option to choose whether it's a folder or a summing. So this is quite important. And if you ever forget the difference, there is a bit of a description here, which you can unpack just to take a look and see what it is that's different about them. The folder stack, if I just grab this one, it's just a basic stack that lets you mute, solo, and control volume. There's nothing flashy going on with this. It's purely organizing tracks. But the summing stack allows you to also treat it just like any other track where you can add plugins, you can pop MIDI onto that track and have it play all the instruments that are inside that track stack, for example. Really powerful, really good feature. So I often say summing stacks are probably the one that you want to use. Let's take a look now at the summing track and just add one of those. So I've created my summing track there and you can see that now this track is the summing track. Just titled Sum 1 there, nice and easy to keep track of. And all of these tracks you can see are indented within. Now with that summing track selected, if I go down to the inspector, you can see that the audio effects are there, the sends are there. That's something that's quite important. Let's take a look at a folder for example. I'm just gonna grab these and create a folder track stack. Just again through create track stack. I'm gonna choose folder stack create. This does not have any of those controls. You can see that they're still indented in the same way. Nothing dramatic happening there, it's exactly the same. It's just that now it's inside a track stack and that track stack is just controlling volume and you can mute and solo, that's about it really. It's purely organizational. It allows you to kind of group things together. So these track stacks, they do function a little bit like groups in other doors. For instance, Ableton has a group feature where it groups tracks together. And you can think of the folder track stack as a little bit like that traditional grouping of tracks. The summing on the other hand is a little bit different. We can see that of course, that it's got audio effects, it's got sends, it's a little bit more flexible and allows you to process the whole audio. Let's say for example, you've got a whole drum stem and you, you wanna group those together, but you wanna compress the whole track. A summing track stack is gonna be great. If you're looking at just up and down volume, you know, nothing too dramatic, then maybe a folder is what you're after. There is one more thing to note about the signal flow when we look at both folders and summing track stacks. If I open up the mixer here, it's a little bit easier to see. We have this summing track here, and we have this folder track stack here. The folder track stack literally just groups the two together. So you still have these two tracks and they're both going to stereo output and they're enclosed in this folder track stack. 
And that folder track stack just has a few controls there where you can up and down the volume quite easily, mute or solo them. Over here on the summing track, it's working a little bit differently. You can see the summing track has a stereo output, something that the folder just doesn't have because the folder is just a control. But with a summing one, the reason it's called summing is because all of these tracks that are enclosed inside are actually being sent out to the summing track. So you can see there it's bus one. So they're all being sent to bus one and then the input on the summing track is bus one. So that's why it's called a summing track because it's summing all of these tracks, all of the audio output from these tracks into the summing track stack. So summing track stacks do affect your audio signal path and how it travels through the door. So it's something to bear in mind. And the reason of course is so that it can process it with audio effects. So all of those tracks get sent all the way through, some into the track stack, and then you can put an EQ, you can put a reverb, a compressor, whatever you want, you can put on that track. Now, what if you want to put groups within groups? That could happen, right? Let's take a look at the session for a moment. Let's say, for example, I want to group these by synthesizers and I have a couple of Jupiter pads here and a couple of Juno pads here, or well, three of them there actually, and then this e-piano from a DX7. Maybe I want to put these two into a group and these three into a group. So I might use something like a summing track to sum them together and then I can process the audio with the two of them. So let's put those into a summing stack and we'll put these three into a summing stack as well. Then what you can do is if you want to group these two together so you actually have them in a group, you can. Let's highlight both of those just using the command key and then I'm going to add them to their own summing stack. And now I have two stacks within one larger stack. Now that is as far as you can stack things. If you try and stack things further, you can't. You can't have a third layer of stacks. The great thing is though, with 10.7.5, they now allow summing stacks to be grouped into summing stacks as well. Whereas before you only could group a summing track into a folder track stack, which is a little bit inconvenient. It's nice to be able to group two things, be able to process them on their summing tracks and then process the audio in a bigger summing track. It's, it's handy to have that option. And I do like that in the new 10.7.5. So these track stacks can really be handy because you can label them anything you like. I can come in here and give that a name of pads. This one was the Juno, this one was the Jupiter. So I can easily name them and I can even add things like icons here. I can come into my keyboards, for example, and just choose something snazzy so that I can, I can find my way back again quite quickly. Too easy. Track stacks are a gem and something I use so often, particularly in orchestral music, for example, grouping things together so that all the violin articulations are all into one summing track. And that happens across all the string instruments. And then I group all of those into a summing track stack for the strings family. You can see how this can be very, very handy. Okay, now let's take a look at VCAs. They stand for voltage controlled amplifiers and they're actually a little bit of an old school analog hangover from the old days of studios. Now, if you've had the pleasure of working inside some big analog studios, you know from the, the, your experience with mixing desks that they have these little subgroup sections or VCAs. Basically, you can put three or four tracks or whatever into one group and use that VCA to control the volume of that whole group. Now this is a benefit back in the analog days because instead of having to you know, grab eight sliders or something and try and just gradually notch them up because that's all of your drum kit, for example, you could just group them all together and then turn up and down the volume with one fader. It's much more convenient. Now you'd be right in thinking, well, wouldn't that just be now a modern equivalent would be a track stack? And yeah, pretty much like a folder track stack is in many ways a little bit like a, uh, a VCA. The thing is though, there is still some use to using VCAs in a door and it actually helps with a bit of a workaround around that two level track stack limitation. Let's take a look. So first of all, I'm gonna open up the mixer. Looking at this mixer, you can see our pads there and we've got uh, another two track stacks added underneath there. So that's our two level track stack group that's sort of happening there. On this pads here, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go create new VCA a new row appears and this is called VCA1 and this is creating a VCA group. And in fact, anywhere along here, if I wanna add this one to a VCA group, boom, I can add it in there. Now at the end of our mixer, we have this new VCA1 group and this control actually controls the volume of our track stack. 
or everything that we have attached to the VCA. Let me come over here, for example, and I just go VCA1 on these two. These two now play at a certain volume, and I could have these set however I like. Maybe they're sort of around that level because one needs to be a little bit louder than the other. Now, if I want to control both of those and notch them up a little bit, yeah, I could put them in a track stack, a folder track stack, and turn up them down the volume, but maybe I just don't need that kind of organization. But I would like to turn them all up at once. I can come over here and use my VCA group to turn it up and down. Very simple. Now, this is great because imagine, for example, you have maybe different parts of a drum kit and you put the toms into a track stack, you put the snare mics into a track stack, the kicks, the cymbals, and then you put all of those inside a track stack for your drums. There's your two track stack levels. But then what if you've got your drums and your bass and they're locked in perfectly and they sound really good, but then you just want to boost them up a little bit. You can't put those in a track stack. And why would you want to? You probably don't want to organize them into a group. So using a VCA could be really handy because you can attach that VCA to both groups and then just easily bring those vo that volume up or down. So there is still a use. Although it's a little bit of an old school hangover, there is still potentially a use there. The other cool thing is that you can actually add it to the track workspace and use automation on it too. If I open up the mixer and I just right click and go create track, just the first menu option here, it throws the VCA into the track workspace. And I can move that around and add it wherever I like. I often quite like to put my VCAs at the bottom, so then that way I've got all my VCAs there. It's kind of like an old school mixer where all the VCAs were grouped up at the end after all the multi-tracks, you know, and then I could just pay attention to the VCAs. So you might want to do that and, you know, maybe you're used to working that way. So if you want your door to function in the same way, you could add everything to its relevant VCA and then just be mixing using the VCAs. So here on the VCA, I can tap A to go into my automation and I can just draw in automation curves if I want. Nice and simple. It could be vocal groups, it could be a whole drum kit, it could be anything that you like, but this makes it a really powerful tool. It can make it really handy when you're writing and mixing in the same session, for example. You can get the perfect balance using just VCAs if you want. It's entirely up to you. It's another tool, another option for you to use in this grouping exercise. Now let's take a look at the last thing, which is actually labeled groups. That's actually Logic's groups section. If I open up my mixer, you can see a row here for group. So I actually have something called groups. This is why Logic calls its groups track stacks rather than groups because it's got groups somewhere else being used. But essentially groups allow you to group together similar instruments. This time though, they don't just control volume or group together into an organizational thing for a cleaner workspace. This is focused on functions that are grouped together. Things like muting all tracks at once, or soloing all tracks at once, editing all tracks at once. These are very powerful tools. For example, I've got this sort of uh, counter lead section here. If I want to, I could add all of these to a group. Let's jump in here and go new group, I'll go group one. So that's now attached to that group. Over here on the right in the inspector, I now have a new groups panel. And this is where I'm gonna name my group. So I might call this one C leads for counter leads. If I open up the settings, this is where the magic happens. So for example, if I want volume and mute to be linked together so that if I tap one, it's always gonna turn on or down or whatever, then I can tick it here. Let's do solo for example. Now over here, when I hit one solo, they all solo at once and I can turn that on and off really easily. I've got mute ticked as well. So that seems like there's some, some obvious advantages there with mute buttons, solo buttons and that sort of thing. But there are actually some really useful tools here when laying down tracking and recording. If you have a look over here, for example, track alternatives. If you turn this one on, then that means that every time you create a new track alternative on this one, let's say you wanna record a different type of take, but you don't want to put it into a take folder, you, could, you will create a track alternative for all of the tracks. I actually have a video, I'll link it above and below, on how to use groups when you're working with drum stems and when indeed you're recording drums as well as editing them. In that video, I share how I kind of group them all together and I turn flex time on for all of them and then that way I can tighten up one track and all of them will move by that same ratio, allowing for everything to stay in phase and everything to line up perfectly. So groups can be a really powerful tool. They can allow you to link certain functionalities together, but they don't do any of the visual stuff. So they don't group stuff and collapse things down. They don't give you a, 
a fader to work with at the end of your track space or something like that. It's much less visual. It's more about the functionality. If you want something visual, like a fader to be able to control, maybe a VCA would be your best. Otherwise, if you want to be able to collapse, open and close track stacks, track stacks are definitely gonna be your best option for that. So there we go, we have track stacks, VCAs, groups, all to help you mix and stay organized better in Logic Pro. I hope you found these tips helpful. Let me know in the comments if there's something you'd like to explore in Logic Pro on this channel. But otherwise, I will catch you in the next one.